Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. And with this series, we are going to start with the TypeScript. So if you haven't seen my JavaScript series, please go and watch more than 35 videos are already there in the JavaScript series. And uh, the good thing is TypeScript is actually using JavaScript internally. So if you are lacking in JavaScript, you won't be able to enjoy TypeScript properly, right? So what is TypeScript? TypeScript is the JavaScript with the syntax of types. Types means the data type, that what type of data it is. It's a string or it is number or it's a Boolean or what, right? So TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. Remember, it's a programmer language, I would say, in terms of giving you a lot of flexibility that you can define the type of the variable and everything. But those things we cannot define in the JavaScript. So what exactly TypeScript does that whatever the code that you are writing here, then it will be converted into the JavaScript with the help of TypeScript compiled. So it will be compiled into ts2.js and then from the .js, it will be executing on your browser or with the node or anything, right? So whatever the code that we are writing into the TS, we have to convert that code into the .js. So this is called the compilation step. Why JS? What is the problem with the JS? The problem with the JS is that it's a runtime language. It will not give you the error at the compile time. When we run it, that time we will see, okay, yeah, this error is coming. But in the TypeScript, before running the program itself, we will get to know that what kind of error it is, just like we do it in Java or C Sharp, most of the compile time programming language. JavaScript is not a compile time language. JavaScript is actually a runtime language. It means everything will be decided at the runtime. If I have created a variable also, it will be decided at the runtime that this variable is the uh, number type or a string type, a Boolean type, a floating type or what. But in the TypeScript, it will give you the flexibility to decide the number that what kind of or decide the variable that what kind of variable it is, the string or number or whatever, right? So it is actually developed by Microsoft. And then it's actually open source, absolutely free of cost. You don't need to pay anything for that. And it is actually a compile time language and then convert the code into TypeScript to JavaScript. And then at the runtime with the help of some JavaScript environment, like node or browser or anything, you can execute your .js file. But when we write the code in the TypeScript, we have to use the .ts extension here. Okay, so... TypeScript is a strongly typed programming language that builds on top of JavaScript, giving you better tooling at scale. Fine. What is TypeScript? Again, TypeScript add additional syntax to JavaScript to support tighter integration with your editor. Catch the errors early in your editor at the compile time itself. A result you can trust. TypeScript code converts to JavaScript, which runs anywhere JavaScript runs. It means on your browser, on your phone, on your uh, node environment or anywhere where exactly the JavaScript runs. So you can execute that. You can convert your TypeScript code to JavaScript in browser, node or Dino or in your apps. TypeScript understand JavaScript and type inference to give you great tooling without additional code. So my code will be much better. And then I can decide it. Okay. Yeah. What will be the type of that particular data? That's where the name itself is written like TypeScript. So type is very important here. So I'll tell you what you mean by type inference and everything in the upcoming chapters. Okay. So what we have to do, we have to download the TypeScript before writing the code. So what we have to do, we will just simply check that do I have the TypeScript is available in my system. So see TypeScript is already available in my system. So how to check that simple open your command prompt or open your terminal. And then you simply write TSC minus V. So you can see in my system, TSC means the TypeScript compiler is already available here. So for example, let's see if I uninstall it. So I'll do one thing that uh, let me just simple uninstall the TypeScript here. Okay. So first time if you are using the TypeScript and then you run this TSC minus V, it says that command not found. It means TypeScript is not available in my system. So I'll do one thing, make sure that, okay, you are having the node. Plus you are having the NPM package also so that with the help of NPM, we can uh, download or install the TypeScript here. So what is the first thing that you have to do? You can simply go to the downloads page and then you can download via NPM or directly in your Visual Studio code also. We are going to download with the NPM. So what we have to do, simple write if you are using Mac machine, if you are, if you are not the admin user, you have to give with the sudo. Otherwise, you simply write npm 
install minus d minus d means i really want to install typescript globally so that from anywhere i can run this particular typescript code whatever the code i'm writing it and then use a simple write uh, typescript here and that's it okay so see this it is actually downloading it and then again now i'm checking tsc minus v now you can see that 5.2.2 version is available here same thing you can uh, check it uh, here also that what is the current version the current version is 5.2 is now available 5.3 is currently in beta which will be available in future perfect it means now the typescript is available now i have to write the code in order to write the code we will use the same thing visual studio code so let's open that visual studio code see from the visual studio code terminal also you can execute that you can download npm and everything okay you can download with npm install typescript also from the visual studio code here but what we have to do, we have already downloaded TypeScript now. What we just need to do, we need to create a folder here. So let's see, I'll go to my documents. I'm going to create one simple folder. And let's see the folder name that I'm writing, TS code here, whatever that folder name that you want to give. And uh, I'll just open that folder here. So let's open the folder, the folder that I have created under documents, TS code. And in this particular folder, I'll start writing my code here. But before that, you do one thing, just simple, go to uh, extensions here. And here in the extension, please download this ESLint extension also here. So it's already there. So for example, let's see if I'm uninstalling it. So once again, I'm installing it here. And then ESLint, this is integrate ESLint JavaScript into VS Code. Perfect. And after that, simply close it and come back here. Okay, so under this particular folder, you can create multiple folders or directories or you can maintain your code. So for example, let's see here, I'm writing a simple JavaScript, sorry, TypeScript code here. So how do you write it? For example, let's say I'm creating name dot. What is the extension that you have to write? Name dot TS. So you can see the symbol is also given. The TS means the TypeScript. And let's see, I'm printing console.log. Hello, TypeScript, that's it. Now, I really want to execute that. So first, what we have to do, as I told you that if you really want to execute, you have to convert. It means whatever the .tts file that you have written. After that, with the help of TSC, TSC is what? TSC is the TypeScript compiler. And then this .ts file will be converted into .js. And now this .js, wherever you see any JavaScript runtime environment, for example, on your browser, you can execute that with the help of Node.js also you can execute that or on your apps where the Node environment is available or any JavaScript environment which is available, you can execute this .js file. So the first thing is that we have to convert name.ts to .js. Okay, the code and everything will remain same, but there are some slightly other differences also. We will see that uh, what are the other differences in terms of uh, TypeScript versus JavaScript. We have they have introduced the uh, decorators. They have introduced the uh, interfaces also, and the type of the variable you can define it here. Perfect. So see this. I'm opening the console or opening the terminal with the help of TSC. Let me check quickly that TSC version is getting displayed here or not. So TSC minus V. Yes, 5.2.2 is already there, and then with the help of TSC. Whatever the name.ts file, I'm compiling it. Okay, so it will create one .js file after the compilation. So here you can see that name.js file is available here. So you can see that in the name.js, exactly same code is available. So both are JavaScript actually. The code is JavaScript, but from the TS, we have converted to the name.js. So whatever the code that you are writing, you have to compile it. And then it will generate the .js file with the same name extension will be .js and then we have to execute with what you can execute on the browser also or with the node. So let's say I'm running with the node. So here I'm writing node and what is the file name? Name.js here. So again, name.js is giving me hello TypeScript getting printed on the console. Simple. Perfect. I'll do one thing. Let me remove this name.js from here. And uh, see, I'll tell you how exactly TypeScript is helping me to catching, to catch the error in the beginning itself. Okay. So see this here, I'll do one thing that uh, let's write one JavaScript file also. So let's see here, the file name is lang.js. 
and I'm creating a function here. Okay, the function name is get info function. And this function says that uh, here I'm using one, let's see something, some variable here with the if condition. Let's see, I'm writing the first name dot dot length. If it is dot length is greater than 10, then here I'm writing console dot output and then I'm printing pass here. Else I'm printing console dot log and I'm printing fail here. So see this, what is the output of this program? The output of this program, if I'm calling this particular get info method from here, the output of this program will give me the error at the runtime. But at the compile time while writing the code, I have no idea where exactly the problem, right? So let me just execute this. So here I'm writing node lang.js. This is a JavaScript code, not the TypeScript. And you can see the first name is not defined. So when I executed that at the runtime, I got to know that first name is not defined here. Why? Because we are not giving any information. What is the value of first name? On what basis it will check the length? It is a string or what? Right? So if I write the same code in the TypeScript, so now let's see name.ts is there. I'm writing exactly same thing here. Let's see, I'm changing the name. Let's see, get info test method that I have written. Can you see that is giving me the error at line number five? It says cannot find the first name. It means it's giving me the error in the beginning itself, at the compile time itself, just like we do, uh, you know, we do get the error with the Java or C sharp or other languages at the compile time itself in the editor. So here, it will be easy for me to catch the error before running the program. So that is a major problem with the JavaScript that, okay, when you run the program at the runtime, it will be decided. And then at the runtime, it will give you the error. So obviously this code will, if you move it to the production, for example, on the browser, and then obviously this code will crash. But here you can easily fix the problem here. You can just decide what is the type of this first name or whatever. You can decide it here. Okay. So this is the major thing. Another example, if you see it here, for example, let's see in the TypeScript, I'm creating one object here. See, let's see, I'm creating one user object, which is equal to, and uh, let's see here, I'm writing that the user first name will be uh, Tom, whatever. And then here I'm writing age is 20. Only two properties, let's see, in this particular user object that I have defined. Then I'm writing that, okay, fine. Give me console.log user dot user dot city. Do we have the city here in this particular user object? No, we don't have that. So see at the compile time, it's immediately giving me the error because of the dot TS, this is a TypeScript file that I'm writing. It says that property city does not exist in this particular object. But if I do the exactly same thing in the JavaScript code, in the JavaScript code, I'm not getting any error. So let's see, I have created, somebody has created this particular object. And after hundred lines of code, I'm writing user.city. I have no idea what are the different properties are there in this particular user object. So I assume that, okay, user.city is there, but actually user.city is not there. So when I run this program, see, I'm running it. And uh, from here, let me just simple clear the console and then I'm running lang.js. So at the runtime, I'll get to know what is the problem. So let's run it lang.js. And now you can see undefined. It means you are getting undefined here. That city is not defined here. So I'm not getting any output here, not error, but undefined. We are getting it. But here in the beginning itself, I'm getting the problem here. That city is not there. So I hope this is clear. So this is exactly the same example that here given that when you write the uh, TypeScript code in the editor check itself, it will give you that property name does not exist on this. So please fix it. Please add the name property here because you have, we are using user.name, which is not there. This is the power of TypeScript, right? Other than that, it gives you the flexibility of writing the object oriented programming concept. Also, we will use it here. It is more readable, more maintenance, maintainability point of view. It will be very easy because we are defining the data in the beginning itself. How to define the data? For example, let's see if I really want to define some uh, data. So for example, let's see age. Age is what? Age is a number. So you can simply write number and then you can write, let's see age is equal to 30 here. For example, like this. 
So let age equal to 30. So let's define a couple of other things. And then here I'm writing that name is what? Name is the string type. And which is equal to, which is equal to, let's see, Naveen here, for example. Okay. Then, or let's write something, name is already somewhere declared. So let's write a first name. I'm writing it here. Fine. Then I'm writing, let's see, one Boolean value. So here I'm writing that user is active or not. So this is a kind of Boolean. So here, see, I'm defining the type of the data and the Boolean is, let's see, user is active here like that. Right here. So here, if you read this particular code or somebody is reading your code, it will be easy for me to determine that, okay, age is what number. So I have to operate or I have to perform all the <clears throat> Number based operations, I can perform it. First name is a string, so I can do any kind of a string manipulation on this. It's a Boolean, so I can use it in my if else condition. So I'm already aware of it. All right. So now let's see what kind of uh, JavaScript, equivalent JavaScript code is generating. So what we have to do, we have to compile this code. So what is the file name? Name.ts. So let's compile it. So see, it is compiling it. And then the name.js will be created. And let's see name.js here so can you see that in the name.js obviously uh, js does not support any colon a number or colon string or anything so see age first name is active so this is the equivalent javascript code of this particular file so can you see age first name is active we have defined the number this is the typescript syntax same syntax will not work here so it is automatically converting into the name.js perfect so this is more flexible for the editor point of view for the ide or for a programmer point of view that programmer is or developer is writing the code in the java uh, with the typescript i'm already aware of that what kind of error or what kind of issues could be they are at the runtime so let's catch those issues in the beginning and the code i can write in a more static way more means more uh, type way i can write it here so this is called the static type language javascript is not i have no idea that what is age or first name or whatever okay i hope this is clear so please uh, start using uh, typescript download it and then do this basic level of compilation practice and then i'll see you in the next chapter that's all for this thank you so much